In this video we're going to be going through how to use e-liquid recipes, which is often shown to ELR. To start with, I'd advise just following recipes posted by others before you start designing your own. I won't be able to show any of the actual recipes as this would be unfair on the creators, so I'll just be showing an example recipe that I've randomly thrown together, so please don't attempt to make it. Quick side note, you'll want to watch my video on vaping lingo that will go through all the flavour company's abbreviations and such to help make life easy. A link will be in the description below. ELR is the largest recipe site by far, unfortunately due to its size there are a fair few bad recipes floating around. To avoid this just click on the ratings tab to see the most highly rated recipes. These are where you should start mixing first. I would read through the comments and flavour notes though before buying any flavours just to make sure it's something you'll like. As you can see this simplistic layout shows all the information you need. You'll need to be logged into ELR for the next stages but don't worry it's free and dead easy to do. The only thing is, when you sign up it may ask you if you want to use manufacturer specific gravities. I'd just leave this box unchecked as, if it, as it's referring to the flavourings and most mixers just assume that 1ml of flavouring is equal to 1 gram. This setting can be adjusted at any time in the preferences menu though. A recipe can easily be adjusted to suit your specific needs by clicking on the spanner icon at the top right of the recipe page. Click on adapt this from the drop down and you'll be greeted by a few boxes that you have complete control over. First things first, scroll down and make sure that this is the private recipe box is checked. This prevents anyone else seeing it and thereby spamming the alert with the same recipe. Once you've done that you can scroll back up and label the recipe whatever you want. Most if not all recipes will need some adjustment. Don't worry though as you don't have to fill in these boxes every time. The trick here is to leave the flavours completely alone and just set out the base of the e-liquid. Make sure you have the amount to make set to the size of your bottles, then input the nicotine level you vape. Make sure that the water, vodka and PGA box is set to 0%. For now, leave the PG to PG ratio and fill in what sort of nicotine you have. I use 72mg per litre nicotine that's diluted in 100% PG. Once that's completed, you have to adjust the PG to VG ratio. If it's a recipe containing a lot of PG flavours, you might get an error message if you try and set the VG too high. The way around this is by checking the max VG box that will auto calculate the highest VG percentage you can have. You can review what it looks like by scrolling down to the preview at the bottom of the page. Once you're happy with everything, click the set these base values as default, then click save. This is self-explanatory, it just saves the base values and means next time that you adapt a recipe, it'll automatically put the values that you chose into everything. Don't worry though, as this does not affect the flavour percentages at all. There are a lot of third party calculators for mixing liquids out there, however for beginners, I think that this is the only one you should use as it automatically considers the specific gravity of the base substances like VG and PG. Don't worry though, as we'll be covering how to use other calculators in later videos. Once you've saved this, you can then access, your, access it in your account by going to user, then my recipes slash favourites. When labelling these recipes, I like to include all the base values within the title so it's easy to differentiate if you have two recipes that are the same in flavour profiles but different sizes. I also like to favourite the recipes, so if I mess something up by accident, I can just look at my favourites and then re-adapt the recipe again. You'll always know if your recipes are private when the little eye symbol appears next to them. Once you have a recipe you want to make, you can either write it down, view it on a screen, or print it off. I personally like to print mine off and keep them in a folder. Just make sure you set the orientation to landscape so it fills the page better. Once all this is done, you're well on your way to start mixing recipes. There's just a few more things I'd like to add about ELR. So you may have noticed some warning symbols next to flavours. Well if you click on the flavour, it will tell you exactly what it's for, i.e. diacetyl content and link you to the material safety data sheet. This is very convenient for those people who want to try and avoid the die key turns. Under the resources tab, there's a very useful flavor warning list among other things. Another neat trick is the flavor stash. This allows you to put input all the flavors you have and then find recipes based off that. ELR has its own forms and chat rooms, which can be quite helpful at times. Additionally, if you donate $10, which currently is about £7, you can get ads removed. And considering the site is completely free, I think it's well worth supporting it. Plus, you do get a little badge on your profile. So that's it for this video. I hope that this helps in some way, and if you have any questions, drop a comment below. Thanks for watching, and make sure to check out my e-liquid making series for more short and helpful videos.